Well, looking at the state of the nation's insecurity uh, becomes the challenge that uh, everyone is really talking about in the country. And uh, looking at what also dovetails to the impeachment threats on President Maman Buhari by uh, some lawmakers uh, in minority caucuses in the uh, Green and Red Chamber becomes the crux or brass tack of what we are looking at today. You remember vividly the uh, Abuja Kaduna train attack and uh, the victims still hurt, some of them. And of course, we also look at the uh, presidential guards troops that were attacked and uh, the lieutenant, the captain, and six others killed in the process, several injured. And then uh, the uh, advance team sent uh, by the president that was also attacked. A lot that we look at here, and uh, it seems uh, we're having a recurring decima in Nigeria's history in tackling insecurity. That's the essence where we're going to be having uh, discussions on this. And starting from my extreme, uh, I have uh, the immediate past chairman of ASU Unibank chapter, and is also the HOD of chemistry, Professor Julius Iasele. Thanks for coming, Julius. Thank you for having me, Philip, and uh, good morning, viewers. And next to him is also another lecturer at University of Benin and the uh, Political Science Department, Neville Obakedo. Thanks for coming, Neville. Thank you for having me. Viewers and listeners, I will have a good Tuesday morning. Now, the lawmakers are saying that there's no turning back. We, we heard a lot. Uh, <laughs> on one side, we, before they went on recess, uh, we, we, we also uh, saw what uh, Francis Fadu Hussein said. You know, where he made it clear that this aspect of insecurity is what they must tackle. And given the uh, president six weeks ultimatum, uh, starting from July 27, some are saying that, well, how will the uh, impeachment threat pan out? Will it possibly come to fusion? Or is it that after the re expiration of the July 27, uh, six weeks ultimatum given, uh, is it that uh, they, they, may, they may come down on the aspect of uh, practicalizing their threats? What do you make of this as it pertains to the nation's insecurity? Julius. Uh, well, <clears throat> I think the first thing to say here is just like you, you started, you opened with, is, uh, is it legitimate to impeach uh, President Buhari? The answer is capital letter underlined, yes, because of uh, what we are currently passing through as a nation. Uh, my worry is that uh, the legislators are just waking up because before this time, insecurity has not just started. It didn't just start one day. It has been on for a very, very long time. So many lives have been lost in this country, both little, who high, and both in any place. All over this country, so many persons have died. What that uh, means is that the leadership of this country has lost uh, grip of the feed is supposed to be uh, superintending over. Apart from just the even the insecurity, you notice that the economy of this country is, is comatose currently. If, if, if you look at it, the, the, there is paralysis of industry, the infrastructures are in comatose states, and then people are hungry. And if you look at what the SDG that we, are, we have signed into, you understand? If you look at it, one of them, the number two point is no hunger or zero hunger. Number one is no to poverty. And we, all of this, Nigeria signed into that, and what do we have in the country now? You can hardly, even those who are supposedly supposed to be in the middle class, cannot, you know, get two square meals in a day. So many pots in homes are dried. I've said before, if you enter into some homes and you hear a child shouting, brother, give me money, and the parents are watching continuously, it means 
there is hunger on, in that home. And people don't have, no can in the whole day, mm. you must see that there are homes where people have not put pot on fire. It's not because they don't want to cook. And what has made it even worse now, not even only what to cook, the power of Emilia to cook, gas is not near, no, 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 nobody now is no more affordable. Kerosene has become history. If you mention kerosene to a child now that is of about two years, or if you begin to ask you, what do, how does it look like? And then, the forest, you know, is no more available, no more wood, and so. Even a simple energy to cook food you can't have in homes. And so, coming back to your question, the insecurity issue, and then the impeachment saga that is on, I have said, is it that our legislators are just waking up? Yes, many of them have said, like the Oshun uh, senator, and then many names were even mentioned here. Yeah, you mean Francis Father Hussein? Yeah, Father Hussein. All the other names were mentioned, Senator Odia. Yeah. Same thing, I saw uh, our honorable senator here, uh, Urohide, I saw him on, on, on the screen and all that. Yes, mine is to tell them. You know, you need to deliver your people. You need to deliver your people because from time, people have, lives have been snuffed out of human beings in this country. And the next thing you hear presidency say is that we are on top of the situation. I don't know whether it is when they come low under the situation. That is where we will get a rebate. But right. however, what I mean, I'm saying here is is it possible now that the legislator or the senators or the National Assembly that they can impeach the president? Because there's a process. There's the a man, process. Yes. The man who, the speaker, the mouthpiece of the Senate, I think Ajibola Bashiru, had said that they have not received any notice to that effect. Mm. No member of that effect, no anything showing that they want to impeach uh, the, 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 the president. That but is the information that, that is... Notice. Yes, that is, that is why that, that there's no notice to that effect. That they stage a walkout, which was a media walkout, does not give signs that the procedure for the impeachment of our president is on. And that is why I'm trying to now ask. Is it that our senators are also setting trap to get attention from presidency? So I don't know. Well, well, thank you very much. Professor Yansele, um, you, you, if, you, if you look closely in some communities, yes. there's this collaboration between these bandits and some of the locals. Uh, in your opening, you talked about poverty and um, hunger and all that. Are we saying poverty? Uh, there's a direct correlation. Is, is, it, is there's it a Yes, there's a linear relationship between that. Otherwise, when a man decides that let me just get that next meal, otherwise I die. Then he can't do anything. The situation now is very, very gory. I'm telling you. Even I went in my own village where a young man was joining this head, head man, you know, to defraud our people. So what is on now? That is one. Two is that the security uh, 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 architecture is near comatose also. That is what you have here. And so, because the Bible says the mind is desperately wicked. Now, now that there is no parenthood is no more there, hunger is everywhere, so you find that it's so easy okay, for well, young men now to latch into okay, 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 into thank you. crime. I think, I think the pendulum will swing back to you, but uh, you may mention of the aspect of hunger, poverty, uh, all of that. Yes. Uh, it was there even before the president uh, came on board, you know, and uh, we've always had this. And uh, we are looking at the legitimacy, you know, of having the president impeached. You are a political scientist. Uh, we look at the procedures of impeaching the president, which the constitutional provisions make it almost impracticable. What's your thought in this, Nebel? In the first instance, the impeachment process 
is uh, comparable to what we call a vote of no confidence process in the parliamentary system of government, where the executive arm of government is seen to have violated the provisions of the Constitution. And the way to remove the person from office is by resorting back to the Constitution that such a person swore to uphold in the oath of allegiance and the oath of office. Like in the case of Nigeria in Session 80 and Session 81, the President and Commander in Chief will take an oath of office and oath of allegiance where we promise or where it promises to uphold uh, the leadership of this country through integrity, no corruption, no, no favoritism, and no uh, sentiment that is based on religion or ethnic or political affiliation. Now, when you hear of impeachment uh, threats threat against Mr. President, he raises questions about the ability of the president to live up to the expectation of the oath of office and oath of allegiance that he has taken. And I have some examples that I will give right now that are point us to the fact that Mr. President has actually committed impeachable offenses. No, we are not there yet. We, we are looking at yes, the processes. Yes, yes, I want to come to the How process. practicable? The Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, 1999 Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, as amended, did not leave any person in doubt, whether politician, whether academician, whether a layman of the street, on the processes and procedure to remove a president or governor. In this case, we are talking about Mr. President. So if you take a copy of the Constitution right now, look at section 143, subsection 1 to 11. The steps for the removal of the president are there. Number one, the there will be a notice of allegation. Which for now we don't have. Yes, a notice of allegation will have to be served on the president. Yes. Before it will be served on the president, one third of members of the House of Senate and members of the House of Rep, Rep. would have signed that they have allegation misconduct against Mr. President. All right. Which the Senate president will serve on the president within seven days. Mm. And then the president will give you opportunity to react yes. to the allegation. He has the right to react, he has the yes. right not to react. Yes, he can even acquire uh, yeah. hire the services of a legal professional yes. to, 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 to defend him. Yes. Now, if there is no response from Mr. President, or the response from Mr. President is satisfactory, in that case, the matter will not go beyond that point. But if there is an established allegation and the explanation to escapate himself is not satisfactory, then there will not be a, a constitution of a panel to investigate. To investigate it. This is not about the level process. And the numbers again is also a challenge there. Now, the way the impeachment procedure is enunciated in the constitution, it will be very difficult. Difficult. For any president, any president, including President Mohamed Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me quickly drop this. You may mention of when it now becomes a, to a point where it has to be investigated. We need to third majority. Yes. Uh, both the House of Rep yes. and the House of Senate. Yes. Do we have the numbers? We don't have the numbers. I'll give you an instance. In 2016, uh, some people of the opposition, they issued an impeachment threat against Mr. President. Number one, because of budget party. Number two, because of the way he appointed service chiefs that uh, the lopsided appointment. They were from almost the same region of the country. And then number three, issue of corruption. Number four, issue of integrity. Number five, issue of, of, uh, of uh, working according to the details of the vote of office and vote of allegiance. Mm. Then majority leader, Senator Ali Udume, made a statement. He said, this Senate is APC Senate. He made that statement. Why was asking questions from a uh, journalist? And he also said that, Impeachment of the president is not only a Senate thing, and he was right, because it is both houses of, of uh, the National Assembly that will initiate the process and sign, and when it, the appropriate majority is met, before this process can actually commence. Mm. 
So that's why I said just now it's very cumbersome and difficult for any president, city president, with his own party being the majority in the National Assembly, to be removed from office through impeachment process. But raising the impeachment issue at all would fast to show that this president, whether President Mohamed Buhari, or those before him, whether President Gulo Ebili Binantan, or uh, President Umaru uh, Yaragua, blessed memory, or Pastor Job, would have been difficult for any of them to okay. be removed from, office removed from office. Because their political parties were the dominant party at the National Assembly. All right, the wave of um, kidnapping and uh, insurgency is definitely not slowing down to an extent. Uh, do you think the federal government has actually run out of idea or they are actually giving up on these guys? Is he, is, he, is, he, is he running out of idea? When we kept on hearing Sambisa Forest, Sambisa Forest, and all that, many simple minds we ask questions. Is Sambisa Forest another planet? Is he, is he somewhere else that is not reachable? If Sambisa Forest is on land, and of course it's not bigger than Nigeria, what stops the Nigerian you know, uh, military from you know, surrounding Sambisa and closing, and then wipe out Sambisa Forest? If somebody, if Nigerian government was able to move outside this country, to go get Kanu, do you understand? And then bring him here. Yeah. To face trial. Yes. I do not see anything that too difficult for the same military to not get wherever is potentiating or promoting insecurity in Nigeria. And therefore, it raises the question of integrity. And therefore, the question also of insincerity in the leadership of this country. Well, don't you think and so somebody will summarize, therefore, that the Nigerian government is complicit in the security we are, insecurity we are facing. But we're talking about uh, combing the uh, forest. Don't you think because of the whole stages there, uh, the government is trying to be careful uh, not to hurt uh, those innocent? How many hostages were there? How many are there? How did the American, American government come to Pakistan to get Osama Bin Laden? They went recently also to Afghanistan to get some out. Is this in this time and age of technology when somebody can sit somewhere very far off and locate? Even bullets can be shot. We read that until it gets to the target, it will not detonate. We are in such uh, age. And so there is nothing that is beyond. Can I ask the, the, the uh, citizens of this country, where is our Tucano jets that Nigeria has spent fortune on? So quite okay. and, uh, yes. Where are they? And all that. So I don't want anybody, anybody to bamboozle me any, anymore because the holy body and the cold run is boiling. Okay. That you, is just, you just heard what Neville Bakedo said concerning the uh, Herculean task of impeaching the president. Yes. And uh, looking at that, we also have uh, reports that about $1 billion, you know, was taken from the, uh, um, uh, from the federated account mm. to fund uh, purchase of equipment, which reports have that the military already acquiring. Now, don't you think instead of looking at the impeachment direction that may not give us a head start or a mm. headway mm. Uh, we should rather look at how to deepen impact in tackling uh this uh, issue of insecure insecurity what do you think about that i said it before let no let him know you not run into a situation where somebody who stole your property is helping you to look for it you may never find it that is the situation we have here. He has one billion dollars. So much money has been raised, you know, to tackle insecurity in Nigeria. Money has already been appropriated for the execution of projects in Nigeria. But well, money is we have already seen that insecurity. implementation has always been the problem. Supposing that that money doesn't get to where it's going to be appropriated or going to be used, 
Is that not what we have been seeing here before? You know how many billions of Naira have been vote, were voted for the feeding of children in, uh, in school? How many children were fed? So that is the situation we have here with. If you have somebody who does not have that, that push or that zeal or will, or will to dispense a particular responsibility, no, no matter the amount of money you are going to raise, it's not going to work. Okay. We have come to a stage where nobody should be fooled anymore. That is the truth. The honest truth is, is crystal clear. It is a time now that the blind man now knows there is sand in the soup. Okay, let me, let me look back at all. Let's get a thoughts on this. Instead of going the way of uh, an Aquilian task, what do you think should be the way forward? What should be the way forward? In the first instance, because I'm from Edo State, I like to give an example from Edo State before I go to the center. The Federal Republic of Nigeria that is operating a constitution, I think that's constitution, uh, as amended. And it is from this constitution we are deriving issues of impeachment. I want to say that uh, in the first instance, the leadership of, the, of, the, of both chambers of the National Assembly is supposed to be impeached and be removed. <laughs> Let there be another leadership. Are you serious? Yes. I will give you an instance. The, the, the president and commander-in-chief of the Nigeria Armed Forces, President Muhammad Bouhari, I think in 2020 or so, or 2019 or 18, I cannot remember the year. He went into SS school account and took 496 million US dollars to purchase 12 Tucano aircraft from the United States without approval of the National Assembly. That was an impeachable offense. The same leadership is still there now and did not impeach the president. Uh, Don't you think this is an emergency situation? An emergency situation. <laughs> does, does it not warrant that? Hey. If it's an emergency situation, that's the more reason why the National Assembly should also have an emergency meeting to approve the, 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 okay. the application. Now, a former Deputy Governor of Edo State, uh, Dr. Pius Ekberami Otubu, was appointed as Chairman of the Board of NNP, uh, NDDC. And the, the President forwarded the name of the Board members to the, National, to the Senate, according to the provision of the Constitution. The students screened them, awaiting their inauguration by the Minister for uh, Attorney General and the Minister, uh, Attorney General of the Federation, Minister for Justice, mm. and the Chairman, uh, the, part of the Minister for NDDC. The same Mr. President, who performed his constitutional function, has seconded uh, an interim government on, on second occasion now, if not the third occasion. That is, that is an impeachable offense. And yet, people from, from the Niger Delta, who are in that National Assembly, both House of Rep and House of Senate, who are seeing the effort of Mr. President and the Constitution, they refuse to impeach him. I said just now that I was going to start from the first thing. We are, this ITV is in Odia Federal Constituency, in Odia Notice to be specific. The University of Benin, where both of us came from now, is also in Odia Notice. Which is the federal constituency of Obia federal constituency. In this constituency, because we talk about train attack in, a, in Abuja, we talk about attack on brigade of gas or gas brigade, we talk about Kuche prison. These are their attacks where the attackers will draw to a particular Kuku where they cannot be operated. There are some communities in those state here, in Obia notice here. I will make sure that there are about 13, but I was able to get the name of 10 of them. There's a card they call Okokudu. Another one they call Anya. Those from those communities who are in Bini now, who, are, who have escaped for their lives from those communities, they will bear me witness. There's another camp they call Gunoba. There's a Futebi camp. There is a Media camp. There's a Boke camp. There is a Uyere, part of Uyere camp on this side, you are going to Owo. Then there is a Udibi on the same path. And then Odigwetwe. These areas in this local government, not up to 20 miles from here, have been taken over by, you call them bandits, you call them uh, criminal men in this, our state. Yet, there is a member of the Federal House of, House of Rep. Uh, Dennis, uh, what is that his name? The House of Rep member of the President. Okay, okay, Dennis. We have not seen him on television or on the face of newspaper. There is a motion that part of his federal constituency is under siege. 
such a person they are even supposed to recall him. And any other person from any constituency, whether Senate or House of Rep, that his constituency is, is bedeviled by activities of, of bandit. Now, the Federal Constitution, the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, 1999 Constitution, says that there are three tiers of government in Nigeria. Federal government, state government, and local government. That federal government shall be an elected government. State government shall be an elected government. Local government shall be an elected government, a local government. In a those states and several other states, there is no third tier government. It is not the local government area as we are talking of, of the not local government area. That is not the government. That is the, that is the jurisdiction. Mm. There is supposed to be a government, local government chairman, vice chairman, councillors for all the wars in a those states and several other states. Such government does not exist. If that government is not existing, and it is this, these areas where parties are operating, how do you, how do you attack them? You go and bring soldiers from a, a three, two, two feet artillery in Akure to come and fight crime here. Whether the owners of the, the people of that constituency, they, they know what is happening there. They are not given a sense of belonging. They are not included in the, in the arrangement. Would they ever give uh, uh, any credible information to the security to, to get the criminals? The answer is no. So if we are talking of impeachment of president, we should even talk of impeachment of some governors and impeachment of some local government chairman where they exist and where they are collaboration with criminal elements. As my, my senior police director now, a former immediate uh, past chairman of, uh, of our local branch of us, that government officials are complicit in this insecurity situation. Okay. But it's not only insecurity that is the problem. And, and sometimes when government talk about security, security, talk about physical security, movement of people, movement of security personnel from one part of the other, of one part of the country to the other, with a view to crack it down on criminal elements. The sociological foundation of crime, they don't even know it. They don't study it. They don't want those who are studying to give them the report so that that can assist them in combating crime. The only thing they know, like the other day I said, they did the election in a, in a Kitty State, they did the election in a Oshu State. And I said, police alone that were taken to Oshu State, which was the last state they conducted the election, police that were taken from outside the state to that state were about 21,000. Assuming we have 10,000 policemen here, and then you now add 21,000 to it, is that not 21,000 policemen in one state on one day election? Okay. Are you getting me? Okay. So when we are talking about insecurity in Nigeria, no one should always narrow insecurity to physical uh, security arrangement, where you just move police from one place, you don't move soldiers from one place, you don't move civil defense. As, as we are all aware, and as you, have, as you observed just now, there is hunger in the land. Hunger in the land alone can prepare people to go to crime. But don't you think the impeachment move will wake up the presidency? The impeachment move will not wake up the, presi the presidency. Wow. I will give you the reason. The reason is already well documented here. I will give you number one. I talk about uh, two, 2016 when I said the president was uh, was accused of uh, of uh, lopsided appointment, service chiefs and the rest of them. Several of the appointment directors, general executive secretary, were from one part of the country, and people started nursing impeachment threats against Mr. President. He was not impeached. Number two, in uh, in 2017, the Human Rights Writers Association of Nigeria. The issue is premier threat against Mr. President. Why? Mr. President, in his meeting with a World Bank official, said that all development assistance aid should be concentrated in northern Nigeria. It was an impeachment statement. That means he was violating his oath of office and oath of allegiance as contained in Section 80 and Section 81 of the 1999 Constitution. The President was not impeached. Number three, in 2018, the House of Rep, the, that issue of that to kind of 496 million US dollars that were used to purchase so 12, uh, 12 uh, to, to, to kind of jet from the United States. If the money was not approved by the, by the Senate and the House of Rep, and it was an impeachment of it, was the president impeached? We talk about a judge issued a, a, an order, a federal high court sitting in Oshobo, presided over by Honorable Justice uh, Maureen Oyetunu, gave an expert motion compelling, issued a writ of mandamus to the National Assembly, compelling them to institute impeachment processes against Mr. President based on the, on the, on the, on the, on the motion that was filed in that court by the state NBA chairman uh, and, the, and the human rights activists. Uh, they said they wrote to, Mr. To, they wrote to the National Assembly asking them to initiate impeachment processes against Mr. President based on the violation of the Constitution. They, they refused. They refused okay. to court. 
the list is long. Even the giving of 1.4 uh, billion to purchase SUV vehicle for Niger Republic and the rest of them. The list is long, and Mr. President was not uh, was not impeached. Uh, okay, but uh, but don't forget, you don't just go about impeaching the president. Yes, even, even though, though that yes, that yes, that even though president. even though you may have legitimate reasons to do that, yes. I think it's still subject to ratification. Ask a question about yes. whether yes, yeah, yes, yeah, yes, 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 even issued a statement some time ago calling on the National Assembly to impeach Mr. President. <laughs> and they did not impeach Mr. President. They did not even initiate it. It is initiating the process in the National Assembly that can be a wake up call. The other day, the House of Rep, I think in 2020 or 2021, the House of Rep called Mr. President to come and give a security report to the National Assembly. He promised of coming about a day before that time. He did not come again. And they were not calling for, for his impeachment. That, that was a violation of the Constitution because. It was an oversight culture of the House of Red they were about to perform on Mr. President, and he refused to come. And the, the Attorney General was writing, saying all sorts of things about why the President cannot be compared to come. These are invisible. All right, in case you're just not... watching, is this morning on ITV, and we are looking at uh, the issues about the nation's insecurity and the impeachment threats on President Muhammadu Buhari. We've been speaking at, uh, with the ASU immediate past chairman, ASU. In the Ben Chapter, Professor Julius Yasele, and of course Neville Obakedo, a political scientist and lecturer in the University of Benin. Well, I, I think uh, Professor raised an issue about the Tucano uh, and uh, the airstrikes. Uh, what are they doing about the airstrikes? And uh, again, before the House committees, the service chiefs we have been also uh, discussed with, and uh, it was also raised the issues about uh, getting. Uh, the security architecture, you know, reposition to a point where we can f have all of these challenges, you know, history. And the airstrike, the air task force, just now we have it on the news that the air task force operation had in Kai at the weekend killed scores of Boko Haram Islamic State of West Africa terrorists in air raids in their hideouts northeast of Bama in Borono. The question is, at the point where we're having the army, you know, doing all of this, uh, don't we also need to uh, increase the capacity of the sister security agencies like the police and as CDC and other groups? Do you think this will go a long way to, you know, tackle this insecurity rather than going the impeachment direction? Yes, whereas there is need to increase the capacity. capacity and population of the other uh, ancillary forces, let me use that word, and all that. Whereas the problems that Nigerians, insecurity problems that Nigerians face is right enough, what is still there is, is there the will. We're talking about about impeachment process just now, whether they are reason, whether can't something be started and all that. What was running through my mind is, can you put something on nothing? It's only God that spoke the word from, to be from nothing and brought manners from heaven for the children of Israel. Assistance like I said, I'm afraid of the sincerity of the leadership of this country. It's been spoken about is everywhere. And this has been made very, very evident now that, for instance, your eggheads, the conscience of this nation have been at home for how many months now? Salaries are not paid out to them. You are hoping that they, they should die, that the lecturers should die, or the university staff should die. In the midst of that, we decline and heal from people. You have taken 1.4 billion naira you are giving to a neighboring country. You are constructing rail line from Nigeria to the country. And many developments you are taking to that country, and now, 
We are hearing it's about the fastest growing country in Africa. <laughs> and you begin to wonder, is that country the only uh, country that borders Nigeria? We have Benari Bobby. Don't we have Chad? Don't we have Cameroon? Why the focus? It appears there's no boundary actually between Daura and Niger. And I just hope, like some persons have say, said in, in so many places, that maybe our president is either his father or his mother is from Niger. <laughs> because it has come to a nauseating point. You increase the population of the Nigerian police. We have heard that some, even the soldier, ran away because they had the intention to do their job justiciably. But then they were prevented. We have had issues like that. We have heard about saboteurs. Beyond that, we have heard of so many ambushes against our military force. And so what are we seeing here? When he said just now about one of the impeachable offenses was the appointment of all the security brass coming from a particular section of the country, does that not speak volumes of the intentions of the man who is doing it? Why not? Does it mean that you don't have other persons from other areas of the country? Uh, but that has been That's taken care of. That's caustic nepotism. That has been taken Cost care of. Nepotism. That has been taken, taken care, care of. of how? How, sir? How, sir? Who heads the Navy? Who heads the, the... That is all of them. If you look at all soldiers, uh, 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 Air Force, and all that. Who heads customs? Those who are supposed to be at the borders and all that. And of course, if you can wake up and say anybody can come into your country, and some other persons are speaking from somewhere that uh, this, uh, 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 our brothers are in several other countries in West Africa, and so they can come in anytime they like and all that, it means this nation does not, it's not a sovereign nation. Well, let's so, anything can happen. When you have a child, a home that is not protected, let's anything at, goes into it. Let's look at what you think uh, the National Assembly can do differently when they come back from recess. What they can do differently? Differently, yes. Because at, at present, it's been reported that there is no notice of impeachment, even before they went on recess, that it was a media walkout. Now, what do you see them doing differently uh, Maybe. To, to, to make a statement? in this? Maybe moment? when they come. They will study the constitution that they were supposed to be working with all this one. Yes. The first thing to do is to go back or while they are at home. Let, let me give them an assignment here. Please, Nigerian senators and those in the House of Assembly, take Nigerian constitution and read, study, look at the impeachment procedure before you come. Otherwise, we will suspect that what people are doing, you are trying to call the attention of presidency, like it has always been. Maybe you have another bill to, uh, to approve, and president has not reached you people. That is what many people are saying, if you are not hearing what they are saying. Let me tell you. All right, 2023 20 is just around the corner, the elections around the corner, and very soon, we'll soon start hearing drums of campaigns and all that. Uh, Obake, do you think uh, reshuffling the security chiefs I might be a way out. The shuffling the security chiefs might be a way out uh, before 2023 election. Yes. Look uh, onto the fact that we are just barely six months or five months to the elections. Okay. I don't believe that when you reshuffle the service chiefs, there will be something meaningful. Who are these service chiefs? the chief of army staff from the north, chief of air staff from the southwest, chief of naval staff from the north, chief of defense chief of staff, staff from, Lucky Rabo. from uh, south south. Mm. So which seems to balance it? So the inspector general police from the north, uh, 
Custom uh, Controller General, uh, Civil, Nigeria Security and Civil Defense Controller General, uh, Immigration Controller General, all from the north. Now, the issue about security and insecurity in Nigeria is not a central thing. The only reason why it is central is because the command is centralized in Abuja. That is the reason why when people call for decentralization of the Nigeria police, having state police, it's not only state police, you should have state armed forces. Because there is no place they call Federal Republic of Nigeria. No place like that. It's only a name and constitution. We only have local government in Nigeria. They are now aggregated together to say so so local government, they make us so state, that is a state. They are so so local, they are all the states, they are now Federal Republic of Nigeria. So if you want to talk about security and insecurity, it is not in Abuja. Because Abuja is even divided into seven council areas. Area councils. Yes. So the, the president is there. All the ministers are there, national assembly members are there. They are occupying the seven uh, council areas there. It means it is council areas of local government that make up Nigeria. If you want to tackle security, start from the basis. Security and insecurity is, is a grassroots thing. And that is why I'm, I'm angry at state governors who do not have, who have, they have legislated systematically out of existence the top tier of government. That is an impeachable offense because <laughs> the constitution recognizes the top tier of government which shall be elected. If any state governor prevents it because they are the one to make budget available for the election to be conducted for people to enter there. If they are not making it available, and yet they are taking their, their, their monthly security vote of 2 billion, 900 billion, uh, 3 billion, uh, uh, 1.8 billion, as the right. case may be, it because, it because an affront of the Constitution, because you feel you have power, so much power as governor, not to do the So you are saying local policing will go a long way? Yes, local policing, call. yes. Yeah. Even when they are bringing thousands of policemen, to each state, bringing soldiers to all the states during the election that will be coming up next year. Okay, your final They're going to be in, this, in space. They are going to be in local areas. They, every community will see them. Okay. So the, the government of Nigeria should tackle insecurity from the grassroots. Tackling insecurity from the grassroots, we have to be, first of all, tackling food insecurity. Because we thought this was an ESM bad thing before it. I just mentioned some 10 communities in Obia Northeast now. Which are agrarian communities where food comes to Benicity and they export food to other, other places. Thank you. Now, the place is, is under siege. Mm -hmm. There will be food insecurity in this state and in this Aziz. So, if we want to fight insecurity, let us first of all localize the fight by fighting food insecurity, removing criminal elements in all the community, whether they are natives or whether they are foreigners or whether they are from anywhere, remove them and let agriculture flourish. From there, you can tackle insecurity. Without that one, we are just joking about it. Thank you so much, okay. Nebula Bakari, for taking our time to be part of this. And uh, Professor Julius Yasele, I think uh, you've articulated your points, or you want to round off? Uh, well, uh, the, the bottom line here is that we continue to sit in limbo. Okay, as a way of digression, uh, aren't you saying what, what, what is, is the present state about uh, ASU and the federal government you know, coming to a round table? That is the problem. Process? We all heard on air why the Nigerian president gave a matching order to the uh, Minister of Education that in two weeks you should return back with a solution. Have you? It has been two weeks since. Have you heard anything? So a president who speaks and is not respected, can such person continue in office? But some have said that uh, for the purpose of having, you know, for the purpose of having the educational sector repositioned that uh, ASU should also shift grounds. What is shifting? Considering yes, what the is, present what is, situation. What, is, what do you really mean by shifting ground? Can you put something or nothing? Well, if you say we should shift ground, on, based on what? Okay. You have, you, you know, I've said before, let Nigeria return back to the 1960 uh, pay structure. You cannot be somewhere your, your newspaper allowance is three million naira. Okay. But me as a professor, only newspaper allowance, your salary is about 13 million or there about 12 million. Then me as a professor, I'm any 
300 uh, uh, thousand naira. Thank you, thank you. That's just a point of digression. And uh, you just heard uh, from the immediate past chairman of our Sudanian chapter, Professor Julius ESLA. And big thanks to you also, Neville Obakedo. This is what you can take on this next insurance segment. Do stay with us. <laughs>